Welcome everybody, so I am back and I'm bringing you guys a brand new YouTube video. So if you see Star Wars The Force Awakens in the background behind me, that's what we're talking about. I'm shooting with my brand new pop filter, so if you see that with my Blue Yeti, I'm trying this out just to see how this works and see if this makes my audio quality sound a little bit better. I might have to start filming in Camtasia Studio Pro 2 in order to uh, get the voice out since I don't have audition work anymore since I upgraded my iMac, which kind of sucks. But, you know, with that being said, hopefully this does the trick and we will have better audio quality with my next series of videos. So, uh, with that, we're going to be talking about Star Wars Force Awakens. When Star Wars The Force Awakens came out, I was working at a movie theater and this movie was really, really cool. I watched all the prequel films that were released in theaters since The Phantom Menace, and so this was pretty cool to see Star Wars back since Disney purchased the rights and obviously this movie is awesome and fantastic I really do like it even with the crappy The Last Jedi which we will have to talk about um, at a different date I still enjoyed myself with this movie I still thought this was a fantastic well-crafted film by uh, Lawrence Kasdan as well as J.J. Abrams Lawrence Kasdan creating the story and the dialogue and everything for this film and J.J. Abrams bringing his directorial you know, debut to the Star Wars franchise now previously he'd been known for things such as Star Trek which is something that I really enjoy I really like the Star Trek series so I was really on board with J.J. Abrams coming to help bring the Star Wars franchise to life it was a little bit weird seeing this take place and not have anything to do in relationship to the Skywalker franchise. This movie has the Skywalkers in it, but it's not necessarily about Luke Skywalker and his hero's journey anymore. It's about Daisy Ridley as Rey going from learning that her parents kind of dropped her off on this planet, this desert planet, becoming one with the Force and learning that she has Force abilities and stuff, which I touched upon in the later movies. Not, not so much in a, in a better light, but this movie really kind of brought up some mysteries. Why was Luke Skywalker's lightsaber in Maz Kanata's temple when he when she, Daisy Ridley goes to meet Harrison Ford? Harrison Ford kind of takes her along this journey to Maz Kanata's uh, temple. Why did you know her, his lightsaber end up in that place that's never really ex been explored and something left on the table? So hopefully J.J. Abrams can explore that a little bit further within the next series of franchises of movies if he chooses to do more after episode 9. I hear word that they're going to be splitting up episode 9 into two parts. Maybe that'll happen. If that does, maybe J.J. Abrams will have more time to explore things that he didn't get to explore with the new franchise in the first couple of movies. But that is another topic for another video. That's brought up. Why is Luke Skywalker kind of hanging out on this island in the middle of the ocean? Like, why? Like how did he get there? And what was his reasoning for going there? You later find out in The Last Jedi, why he kind of turned his back on the Force, kind of became this bitter old man, which I didn't really like. You know, at first I kind of liked it because I was kind of blinded by nostalgia for the previous movies and getting to see Luke Skywalker back on the screen, but what they did to his character, what they did to Mark Hamill was something that I really need to discuss at some point just because it's been on my mind for a while, but for what they did with the ending of that film, they really did come all to a conclusion. It was really cool to see Carrie Fisher back. It was really cool to see Harrison Ford and Chewbacca back. There's some pretty cool uh, sequences such as the traitor guy that comes out with the gigantic staff and it shoots out electricity. Finn goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with this guy and it's really cool to see that chase on Jakku with the TIE fighters shooting down the, the lasers from the, their vehicle and they're kind of running sort of in a straight line and they're they're going by and they see the, the Millennium Falcon they're like, oh that's just a hunk of junk and they're like, oh yeah the junk will do in their uh, ship that they're originally going for, it, you know, explodes and everything so they finally get back to the Millennium Falcon and that's where they kind of meet Harrison Ford and Chewbacca later on in the movie. It was kind of cool to see some of the new creatures that they added in the film you know, with the Daisy Ridley and John Boyega, you know, kind of getting into that freighter class ship and uh, meeting those like sort of bounty hunter type characters that are going after Harrison Ford and uh, Chewbacca. It was kind of cool to see that. It was kind of cool to see, you know, a lightsaber battle back in the Star Wars franchise at the end of the movie. Now, people have issues with that, obviously, because Rey defeats Kylo Ren. She hits him in kind of one swing, and that pretty much knocks him out of the picture. Kylo Ren has no issue taking out Finn, but he has a problem taking out Daisy Ridley. They have that kind of clash moment where it's like, you need a teacher, and things like that. Like, I wish they would have left Kylo Ren having his helmet on for most of the movie. It's more sort of entertaining when you don't get to see who the villain actually is. That's why Darth Vader is such a badass villain, because you rarely got to see him without his helmet off. When he did have his helmet off, it was for a very good reason. It was for the fact that there was a reason why Darth Vader had his helmet on this movie, and it was mostly biological because of what happened in Revenge of the Sith. It would have been cool to kind of see that play out where Kylo Ren was trying to mimic Darth Vader and not show his face and everything, but he does for Daisy Ridley. And that just kind of throws everything off. Without that being said, there were some really cool moments that I like. Like I said, I like seeing Poe Dameron, you know, flying the X-Wing through the Death Star. 
Um, it was kind of weird that they built a second Death Star called the Star Killer Base, which was interesting that they called it Star Killer Base because Luke Skywalker was originally going to be called Luke Star Killer, and they eventually had the Star Wars: The Force of Nature. They do have a character named Star Killer in it, so it's kind of cool that they harken back a little bit to some of the older Star Wars canon. But it was kind of weird they built a, a, a third Death Star in order to defeat. You know, the Rebel Alliance and everything, but Poe Dameron was a cool character in this movie, and in later movies they kind of whittle his character down to being a shell of his former self. I know I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for saying that, but it's just pretty much true, but, you know, I really do like The Force Awakens. This is one of those movies where I can go back and rewatch and be like, you know what, that was a pretty cool movie, even though it's basically just A New Hope redone for the sake of redoing a movie. It doesn't really make sense why they wouldn't try anything a little bit new. It basically follows the same plot formula that you've seen in New Hope, so if you don't really want to watch Force Awakens, you can skip that movie and then you won't really be at a loss for words. You can just watch A New Hope and it's pretty much the same thing. But that's my thoughts on Star Wars The Force Awakens. I actually really did like the movie even with all my gripes about it. I think this is a solid film that could have started something really cool and could have tied all these characters and all these loose ends together within the Star Wars franchise, but, you know, Disney dropped the ball on The Last Jedi, and now they're kind of having to save face and sort of recover from that, so we'll see in Episode Nine if they actually do that. I am not entirely sure if they're going to do that, but, you know, that's kind of what we got here, so hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I've been kind of slacking lately on videos and stuff, and that's just because I'm kind of dealing with some, with some stuff, you know, not only personally, but I'm also dealing with the fact that there's construction going on in my apartment, so I have to kind of time when I do these reviews and stuff for you guys, so... Hopefully you guys got a little bit of enjoyment out of this, and I'll definitely see you guys in the next video. So, rate, comment, subscribe as usual, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.